talk about the development of the mind, the jitta. So we see that the Dhamma is what takes us to a clear knowledge. And so we try to cultivate these qualities of the uh, five faculties and five powers, the four right exertions, uh, the four itipadas, the, so the basis of power, and then the noble eightfold path, and the seven factors for awakening. So these are the, together, are the 37 wings to awakening. These are the things which, when they come together, that will allow us to see the Dhamma. So in the beginning it all starts from sata, from conviction or faith, as belief in the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, and also a faith and a belief in creating goodness and creating merit and skillful deeds. And so we have this faith and this belief. So we travel from near and far to come to the monastery. Some people live very close by and they travel here. Some people travel from Rayong City, some from Bangkok, and some from come, have come from overseas. And so there's always this faith first, and also the faith to practice in a consistent way, to uh, give, to make offerings to the Sangha, Sangha Dana. And so these offerings to the monks and nuns and uh, bhikkhunis, uh, but in these days we can say that the samaneris and the nuns, the mechis, who keep their sila strictly, that these are the representatives of the bhikkhunis in this day and age. And there's also the lay people, the lay males and females who have hearts of faith in the Buddhasasana and who work to support the Buddhasasana with their offerings of the four requisites. And so this is really important and this faith is really important. It's a noble wealth. So we have this belief and this faith already, and then we take that to practice. We have faith in the arising of the perfectly self-awakened Buddha, that he really was born, that he was uh, genuinely awakened, uh, and became the Arahant, uh, the Samma, some Buddha. So we have faith in that. And then we have our effort, our sincerity in our practice. So this effort to put down things which are not good in our minds and in our acts of our body and speech as well. So to reduce these, to abandon them, to quit them. And then the effort in cultivating goodness, the things which are meritorious and skillful. So to try to bring these up and try to nurture them, cultivate them and grow them. So we have these qualities in, in our lives, that we all have faith and we all have a strong and sincere effort as well. And then we have, we try to kind of engage in this noble eightfold path. So with mindfulness, for example, we bring up right view. And Right view is the cultivation of mindfulness. We're trying to be mindful and having our hearts set on developing wisdom. So there's also the five indriyas, the five faculties. We could say that those are like the chief or the leader, that which is in charge. So those are the indriyas and they are in charge of each particular duty that they have. So when uh, faith, the sata, is in charge, then the heart that doesn't have faith just can't arise. And then laziness also can't come up when faith is in charge. 
or when mindfulness is in charge, then a scattered mind just can't appear. When samadhi is well established, then the mind which is chaotic just can't come up. And if wisdom is there, then delusion can't be controlling the mind. So each of these qualities has this kind of meaning. So we can see that there are these five indriyas and five uh, powers, and also the five hindrances. And so what are they like then? So if we have too much faith, for example, and our wisdom is too little, then it will be very easy for us to become deluded. And then it's possible for lust and anger, for the different hindrances for ill will to arise. But if we have too much panya, too much wisdom, and too little faith, then the mind will be very scattered. There will be all this thinking going on, and many doubts come up. We can doubt, was the Buddha real? Did he actually awaken? And if we go to the holy sites in India, there can be these doubts, well, is this actually right? Like, are these the actual places? Did these things really happen here? And so these doubts can appear if there's too much wisdom and too little faith. But if there's too much faith, we just believe everything. Too much wisdom, many doubts come up. And if we are engaging in something with too much effort, we have our hearts that are too uh, keen on it or have too much effort, and the samadhi isn't well established, then what is that like? That there's agitation in the mind, the mind's very scattered, and we just won't get results from our practice. And it's like we're going fishing in a pond that doesn't have any fish in it. And no matter how much effort we put in, we're just not going to catch any fish. So the mind becomes very scattered. But if there's too much samadhi and the effort is lacking, then we can feel dejected. We can start feeling discouraged and like we want to give up. And so laziness can come up. So we need to train. Train to get these qualities in balance, so faith and wisdom, get them just right. And then try and try to do this little by little. So when faith has come up already, then we need to work to give rise to wisdom, to try to see things in line with their truth. But for the most part, we have faith as the quality that is leading us. Some people, they are led by wisdom, and then they come around to cultivating faith later. But whatever the case, we need to try to get them in balance. And so this is us walking along this path of sila, samadhi, and panya, of virtue, collectedness, and wisdom. This is the noble path. So the arising of a Buddha, a perfectly self-awakened Buddha, is the hardest thing to find. It's the rarest thing. The arising of the Dhamma, the arising of the Sangha also. And also the coming about of a mind which is truly human. This too is difficult. Because we see that there's a lot of people who are born into this world. And previously in Thailand there were 5 million people, and now the population is 70 million. So that's over 10 times what there used to be. But even though they have uh, bodies which are those of people, their minds are not human. And so there's a lot of these people around and there's a great chaos because they don't keep the five precepts. But trying to bring about a mind which is human, that's a mind which is set on creating merit and goodness, and this is something which is really difficult to find. 
and finding true humans is actually very hard. So we've been born to bodies that are human. And we also have mindfulness, we have faith, we have um, wisdom as well. And so there's faith in the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha. And what this shows is that we have cultivated a lot of merit and parami in the past so that these qualities can come up within our hearts and we can really be set on creating them even further and creating more and more goodness. And so when it's our birthday, for example, then we do some special things. And this is to recollect that we have this really good opportunity, that all of us have this good opportunity, that we've been born into this life. We've had opportunity to get this birth, to get a body of a human. And then with that, we can study the Dhamma, that we have eyes, ears, nose, tongue, a body, a mind. And these are functioning well, so we're able to receive these teachings. And if our barami is full, then all it takes is for us to hear the word buddha, and we won't be able to get any rest at night, that the mind will just be so awake. Just like Ananda Pindaka, he just heard the word Buddha and his mind was awake. So this shows that he has created a lot of Bharami already. This has come up from the past. And so to hear these words, to hear the word Buddha or Dhamma or Sangha, and to have this instant faith come up, this requires a lot of Bharami. It shows that they have created much goodness in the past, and this is carried on till this present moment. And so we cultivate then our barami, our faith as well, set our hearts on the practice, cultivating these energies of the five palas, the five powers. And we do that until our hearts meet with genuine knowledge and true wisdom. So in the beginning, we will start off with being ignorant. But then we try to cultivate these qualities of samadhi and wisdom so that we can grow our faith. So we have faith in walking meditation, sitting meditation, in generosity and offering food to the monks. And this is something that's normal. These deeds are normal for us. And so whether people do this a little or a lot, depends upon the faith that they have. If they don't have any faith, then they just can't do these things. So some people wake up very early in the morning in order to prepare food for the monks so they can offer to them on alms round. And some people, even from the night beforehand, they start preparing their food. So they have this sincerity and this really important quality of faith. And the wealth of faith is something that we just, that no wealth in the world can compare to. So there's the wealth of sila, virtue, the wealth of faith. And these are really important inner uh, qualities, inner wealths. We should understand that they are noble wealths. And then we need to set our hearts on cultivating our minds as well. So bringing about samadhi in the mind and then start to cultivate wisdom as well so that we can gain an understanding into the Dhamma. And this is what Ananda Pindaka did, that he was born and he had this genuine faith in his heart and he had effort in cultivating goodness as well, effort in developing mindfulness, in constantly trying to bring up samadhi and wisdom. And he was a Sotapanna, became a stream enterer from the first time that he listened to the Dhamma. And the same was true for Lady Visaka. And so for us, as lay people, uh, lay men, lay women, that we have this sincerity in the practice. That generosity is something that's very normal for us already. Virtue is very normal for us too keeping the five precepts, the eight precepts. 
And so may you all grow in the Dhamma of the perfectly self-awakened Buddha. May you all have uh, long lives through the power of the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha, and also through the power of all the goodness that you have created. May you have good and strong health. May you be free from all danger. May you see the Dhamma uh, on this day or in this very life. And may you grow in blessings.